please, Mirror, take away this dirt and this filth. Well, I knew, I knew this looking glass was going to be trouble. I'm, I'm just going to get rid of it. Can the mirror really remove the dirt from her face? Of course not. That's not its purpose. So should we just throw out the mirror and get rid of it? No, that's not going to fix the problem. You see, we have to understand the purpose of the mirror. The mirror is designed to show us our condition. It's not designed to clean our face. The Bible says God's law is a mirror. The law can't make us clean, but it points out the sin in our lives. In fact, the Bible says that sin is the transgression of the law. So what's the purpose of the law? The law shows us our need of Jesus and of His grace. Oh man, what did I do? As we talked about before, sir, the reason I stopped you doing a 68 and a 55, but I'm going to be gracious and let you off with a warning. Thank you, sir. Here's your license, registration, and insurance. And if you can just use your cruise control and keep it at 55, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, officer. All right, thanks. Thank you, Lord. Boy, that was close. I thought he was going to nail me to the wall. Yes! He was just graciously spared from having to pay a ticket. Does that mean he's at liberty to continue violating the law? But that's what some people think when it comes to God's law. But Paul writes, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. If an officer lets you off and lets you go with just a warning, you're probably going to drive away within the law. So the law points out the sin in our lives. We stand condemned. But the Bible also says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So what is grace? The Bible says that we're not under the law, but under grace. In other words, we're not saved by means of the law, but by means of grace. The word under is an old sailing term that when they say we're under sail, it means we're being empowered by the wind in the sail. And so the grace of God is more than what some people think. They usually think of grace as simply unmerited favor, which enables you to do pretty much whatever you want, but you're still saved by God's grace. But in reality, when we're under God's grace, we're receiving the power of God to live for Him and to live to His glory.
The Bible compares the Holy Spirit to the wind. As the wind fills the sail and moves the boat, so God's Spirit, working His grace in our lives, enables us to obey Him and to glorify Him in our lives. God fills us with His empowering grace when we come to Him in true repentance and ask for forgiveness for our sins. Look, I don't, I don't know what got into me. Uh, you're gonna have your purse back. Uh, will you forgive me? You're really giving it back to me? Yeah. Please never do this again to anyone. <laughs> I won't. Thank you. Yeah, just forgave you. You're taking it again. Doesn't matter. Give it. Give it back to me now. So was he really sorry for stealing the purse? I don't think so. And that's the way it is when we, if we ask God to forgive us, and then we just keep on doing the same sins over and over again. You see, that's not repentance. True repentance is sorrow for sin and turning away from it. You see, if we keep on doing the same sin over and over again, then we're giving the impression that uh, it's okay to break God's law. And it's God's law that will be the standard in the judgment. Suppose a criminal in court who had violated the law uh, made his plea that he had only occasionally stolen his neighbor's goods. He was generally a good citizen. Do you suppose that plea would get him off the hook? Do you think a, a just judge and jury would declare him not guilty? And yet some people seem to believe that God, the judge of all the earth, will just excuse their transgressions. When we look into God's law as a mirror, and then we just go our way and pretend that we're righteous, when we stand before the bar of God, the very sin that we have ignored will condemn us. You see, when God saves sinners, he doesn't do away with his law. The blood of Christ doesn't blot out uh, the law. What the blood of Christ does is washes us from our sins. When we come to Jesus and repent of our sins, our guilt is placed upon him and we receive his righteousness. And then when we stand before God, because his, his righteousness working in us transforms our lives, we're given power to live righteously for him. So then as we stand before God's judgment seat, then our lives will reveal that he has been working in us and that his law is living in our lives. So when you see your sin, when you realize your guilt, don't don't throw away the law. Don't ignore it and pretend that it's not there. 
But come to Jesus, repent of your sins, and allow him to fill you and transform your life so that you can demonstrate his law in your life.